Welcome back to the Triathlon Training Explained show powered by Training Peaks. This week I'm going to be looking at what can make or break your race performance and then more importantly addressing how best to prepare to make sure you get a successful performance in your next race. The adrenaline of race day can easily make you a little over ambitious and this is where it could go disastrously wrong. Admittedly, if you've trained hard and you've had a successful taper, you're going to feel great at the start of your race and then it's tough not to go off too hard. But try and stick to your numbers now because you can always increase your pace later on and that will definitely beat having to walk home. Talking of numbers, use them. Admittedly, it's going to be hard for the swim, but even if you've got something as basic as a wristwatch, it's still at least going to help you when it comes to the bike and the run for knowing roughly how long you've been going. But if you've got something more advanced, such as power on your bike, then give yourself a cap for your maximum power and also obviously have an average that you're targeting for the 112 miles. Heart rate isn't quite so accurate, but it can still be really useful, especially on the run where you're unlikely to have power. Just make sure that you've used it in training so that you know how your heart rate should correlate to your race pace efforts. And consider the fact that adrenaline from race day, as well as maybe extra caffeine, will affect it, but it's still a very useful guide. There's only so much you can train and prepare for when it comes to a race and one of those things that you can't control is the weather. Obviously you're going to have a fairly good idea of what the normal conditions are for the race that you've entered and then hopefully you've managed to prepare for those conditions but just make sure you always pack kit for all eventualities and do a last minute check of the forecast. If for example you're racing somewhere like here in Kona then you're pretty sure it's going to be hot, humid and as you can see pretty windy so make sure that you try to prepare as best you can at home for the environment that you're going to be racing in. Again have the the right kit and also check the forecast a few days prior because you'll see if any fronts are coming through and just remember you could be racing anything from 8 to 17 hours and within a day conditions can change dramatically and one of those being the sun and the angle of it so have a think about your goggles and which direction you're going to be swimming in to make sure you've got the right tint so you can spot the swim boys and when it comes onto the bike whether you want to have tinted or clear lens glasses or a visor and also for the run just think about what type of protection you might want and take conditions into consideration as well when you're making your pacing plan because if, for example, you're racing somewhere really hot or on the other end of the spectrum, cold and wet, it is going to affect your effort levels for different reasons. So make sure you're prepared to adjust your pace, listen to your effort, listen to your heart rate and your body. And remember, everyone else is in the same boat as you. And you've got to think about the bigger picture of actually being successful in the race overall rather than just sticking exactly to your watch. And going back to daylight hours and sunshine, it's worth noting the actual time it gets dark where you're racing, as you might even want lights for the finish and the run. And it's a good idea to always pack a head torch just in case for transition. The wind can play a significant part in your race as well, especially if you're racing somewhere like here that's got large exposed areas that really give the chance for the wind to build up. So consider this, especially if you're riding to pace or speed and you're not using power. Say, for example, you're riding out into a headwind and you're trying to stick to that average pace you've planned, you're actually gonna be working much harder than your predicted race pace effort and vice versa so consider that and also if you're going to have crosswinds just think about what rim width you're using on your bike as well this links both of the previous points unless you're racing somewhere that's pan flat like ironman florida hills are going to affect your race there's actually an app called the pacing project that takes us into consideration for you you put in your target time and then it'll tell you at what pace you need to be running or riding at different sections of the course to meet that overall target time but admittedly it's only for a few races at the moment so if you're lucky enough to use power that can be really helpful but if you are racing somewhere that's really hilly consider this when you're looking at your overall goal time and final point Look at the surface when it comes to the cycle because this will affect what tyre pressure you want to run in your tyres. Again, it's all about the planning and it's not just for race day, but pre-race day nutrition is just as important. So stick to what you know. If you're traveling, then try and take some food that you're familiar with, with you. And the day before the race, reduce your fiber intake, up your carbohydrates, and the same goes for your race day breakfast. And just make sure you don't try anything new on race day. And then on to the actual race. Have a plan of what you want to eat and drink and when. Some people even set an alarm on their watch to remind them when to take on fluids or take on fuel or even have a little plan stuck on their top tube. And a good benchmark is to try and take something on every 20 minutes. And if your race is a long time after you've actually had your breakfast, it's worth considering topping up your carbohydrate levels with a gel or a carbohydrate drink before you start as well. 
do bear in mind the conditions because if you're racing somewhere hot, then you're going to need to take on more hydration, but you'll also be losing more salt and electrolytes. So bear that in mind. And you might even want to consider getting a sweat test, which will measure the amount of sweat you lose so you can have an even more structured plan. And then on the other end of the spectrum, if you're racing somewhere cold, you're not going to need quite as much hydration. So you don't want to be forcing it in and then needing to stop to have a pee because your blood is really full. But also bear in mind that the cold can suppress your thirst too much. So make sure you consider that and you've got a good plan. It's also worth noting that some long distance races actually allow you to have a special needs bag for the bike and sometimes even the run. And you can put spares in this, but more importantly, you can also put your own nutrition. So if you don't like the course nutrition or you've not had chance to practice with it, you've got that as a great backup. I feel like I can't reiterate enough the importance of not trying something new on race day, unless obviously it's out of your control. And that might seem obvious for nutrition, but the same goes for equipment. Trainers, for example, need to be worn in so you don't run the risk of getting blisters. So an ideal situation would be to buy two pairs, one that you're going to train in and another pair you're going to keep for racing that you just wear in a few times so that they're comfortable and then you put them away and bring them out on race day. It is tempting to go shopping at the race expo the day before when there's so many great things on offer but not only will this tie your legs out if you're spending hours wandering around you also don't want to be tempted to buy something brand new to use on race day unless it's something that's not so personal like a water bottle for example talking of preparation we can't ignore those final few hours before your race make sure you do a thorough warm-up obviously the amount you need will depend on the conditions but do something that you've practiced in training and you know what you're doing rather than copying what you see a fellow competitor trying. I think by now you've probably gathered that preparation is key to a good performance. So have a think about all of these factors when you're planning and preparing for your next long distance race. And if you want to make sure that you get all of our videos at GTN, just hit the globe to subscribe. And that video that I spoke about that Mark did, looking specifically at pacing of an Ironman, you can find that just here. And if you want to find out what the pros do the night before they race, we've got an Ask the Pros video just here.